Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I am starting my day with my green anaconda ivy and she is looking incredible. You may remember about a week and a half ago, she ate a 15 pound pig. Oh, yeah, Woo. she definitely grabbed that pig. Now that's gonna be an extremely big meal for her and look at her completely digested and I tell you what she is looking pretty big there's no doubt that she put a tremendous amount of that pig energy into growth so we are really excited to find out like what kind of a poop would she have after a 50 pound pig now I realize that's a little weird that we're excited about it but I didn't know because this is the first time we fed such a huge meal to an anaconda and take a look at this guys again i know it's a little bit gross but this is all the poop that she did and after just holding her it doesn't feel like there's anything left in her there's no lump there's no bumps there's no kind of masses in there so it looks like she took 15 pounds of pig and turned it into what is looks like less than a pound of actually poop again i know that uh this may be a weird way to start the day by examining poop but to be honest with you i find this extremely interesting uh to see such little ways from such a large meal so again it's freaking amazing that this animal put so much of that meal into growth and i tell you what it was funny i actually was looking yesterday at the video when we got her she's already so much bigger we've only had it for about four months and she has gained a tremendous amount of weight now the big question is and i'd like to know from you guys because i'm not really sure what i want to do do we continue feeding her like 15 pound meals we do have a handful more pigs or do i go back to smaller meals i'm not sure what to do you know the fact that anacondas eat large meals in the wild maybe i feed her big meals and that's how we're going to get her to grow really big i'm not sure let me know down in comments what you guys think should i do like a couple smaller rabbits at a time or should i do one big meal every single seven to ten days or whenever she's ready to eat i'm not really sure what to do because it's the first time i've had a relatively large anaconda and guys i realize this is really gross but my curiosity got the best of me this is the poop right here and uh, i'm not gonna lie it doesn't smell really good i'm gonna go ahead and weigh it just because i'm very curious how much poop it actually is it's actually 245 grams that's it 245 grams of poop so 245 grams i mean that's less than a half a pound think about that 15 pounds of pig went into ivy and only about a half a pound of waste came out uh, probably the first time in YouTube history that uh, someone has been so excited about weighing poop, but I think that is absolutely amazing. Yo, what's up? Guess what? You know that Ivy, the green anaconda, ate a 15 pound pig. Yeah. Oh uh, my God. Take a guess how much her poop weighed. Oh. <laughs> Just take you a guess. weighed her poop? We weighed her poop. Okay. 15 pounds in, probably five out. A half a pound. What? That's it. A half a what? pound. What? Yep, she put 14, Where does it and all half, go? 14 and a half pounds into growth, right? Oh my, that's, now that's really crazy. I never thought about that. That's I never nuts. thought about, I guess it's porous. I couldn't tell you, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know what? It's, it <laughs> seems like it's heavier. I'm sure it's a big load on there, I'm like, right? I'm not following you. Right? It's you're spongy, like the poop, the poop, the, the poop is porous, it's air pockets. I, I never checked in. I it, thought it was yeah. solid. Okay. That is so cool. I'm sure she's a lot bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Reptiles put a lot of their intake of food into growth. There's no other better example to talk about that than blue tongue skinks. I mean, look at this monkey right here. I mean, it's just a few months old and it's huge. It's probably 10 times its size. Take salt and pepper, for example. Salt was 55 grams when we got her. It's just a year later and she's almost 1,500 grams. Just think about that. That is 30 times her size in one year. And one of the reasons for that is ectothermic or cold-blooded animals don't put any energy into maintaining body temperature mammals like us put a tremendous amount of our energy into actually maintaining a particular temperature that way when we go outside we're the same temperature we're inside we're the same temperature whereas with reptiles they don't do that their body temperature is dictated by their environment around if it's 90 degrees outside that is their body temperature of course that's why you want to keep reptiles warm because if it's 60 degrees their body temperature is going to drop and that's a bad thing so they can put more of that intake of food into energy of growth and maintaining it's pretty amazing but i had never seen it with an anaconda before that's pretty stunning i tell you what casper shed unfortunately destroyed his case gonna have to clean that up in a little bit but oh my gosh he looks amazing you know he always looks really good but some sheds he comes out and just looks like a stunner i mean just this stark white 
beautiful snake. I mean, look at this. This is a long snake, too. After visiting with Kevin McCurley over at Nerd and seeing some of his big critics, I tell you what, it's pretty amazing. Oh my gosh, but Casper is a handful. It's shocking how long this snake is. Again, you know, some animals get more girthy than others. With him, he's not like a big eater where he'll eat, you know, three or four rats a week, but he's not going to eat a lot of rabbits. But he did actually eat that pig last time, which is a few pounds. So maybe he'll put on a little more girth, but nevertheless, this is a gorgeous snake. He looks incredible, but uh, I've got my work cut out for me because I'm going to go ahead and have to clean this whole cage up. surprised I didn't bring any animals back from Kevin? Were you expecting me to? But what if I maybe did and I didn't tell you? You wouldn't do that. No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> but I wanted to. There was a pie grease Yeah, really you're lucky wanted. you didn't. Pie. Pie grease that's amazing. You literally would die if you brought home another grease What? Yeah. Can I just get one more No. I, I'm going to get rid of a few grease and then I can get one grease no. So it'd be like four gone, one back. No, because how many do you already have? It doesn't matter. No, it does more. matter. No, it does matter. That's why I'm idea. asking. Listen, it matters. I got this new idea. We're going to need some oh, more yeah. big snakes. Oh, yeah? Reese Is that what no, you No, no, no. Listen, I've got a new idea. I want to start setting up temporary reptariums in malls. No. What? No, so we go in in a mall, no. we set up a reptarium for like one month, they pay us to be there for a month, and, and we're gonna need some big snakes and big monitors. What part of, I'm not doing anything else, <laughs> did you not understand? So, but reptarium in malls, so it's not only gonna be really popular, but it'll drive traffic back here, and it'll be a good way to, it's a good revenue stream too. Do you ever listen to what I say? So, so we need a pie grease this. <laughs> Little update on the Viper Boa, that little baby that we found out that uh, Miguel, my buddy at Always Evolving Pythons, sent us the adults and uh, one of them had babies. Unfortunately, we only found the one baby out. We don't know if she had more, but uh, I just want to update you. Doing absolutely amazing. Love little baby Viper Boas. But unfortunately, we didn't find any others, so she might have just had one or uh, who knows, maybe one day we'll find other ones down here. But uh, it was bumming because I was hoping we were gonna find some more, but I'm so happy that we have this one little baby. It's amazing how just 100 grams can really change an animal. This is actually a cypress pin, which is a pretty easy animal to produce. It's just a double incomplete dominant animal, but unbelievably clean. Beautiful as a baby, but now that it's another 100 grams, who doggy, that thing is a smoker. All right, what'd you get? Um, so I did not order this. What the heck is it? Uh, I am not sure, but it's clearly snake print. So a shirt, it? maybe? Oh my god. Oh my gosh, it's a one it's a one arm, it's like a one arm shirt. Oh my god. Fashion gosh. show! Oh. Fashion show! <laughs> Put it up. Come on now. Oh my god. How sweet somebody said that was, to you. That was super nice. <laughs> it's like you so mean. Thank you. We love when <laughs> We love when you guys send stuff, but uh Lori's not as appreciative as some of us. Where am I gonna wear it? Uh, just put this on for the birthday party? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, thank you guys. Whoever sent that, awesome. No, no. I don't know who, so thank you. <laughs> so Bruce has been doing a great job. Of, you finally figured out how to keep this pond clean, I take it. Yeah, what I got was the, the formula down. Got here. the form looked up. Like, yeah. is this poop right here? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, like, I know you guys might, like, for the most part, actually look kind of like they're, they're uh, Yeah, it looks like pellets. Yeah, 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 but that's actually, I've never seen a snapping turtle poop before, so that's pretty interesting. So I guess that goes along with the uh, the whole theme of anaconda poop in this vlog. So uh, good. All right, we'll, uh, we'll, get that, we'll get that cleaned up, hopefully, really soon. Got my guy. Flaming Hot Cheeto. Always uh, love taking a little time and doing a little enrichment with these guys. We'll take a roach right here. We'll just throw it on the ground, let him see if he wants to come and get it. There he goes. 
Oh, nice little meal for him. Uh, these guys, again, the roaches are a tremendous amount of nutrition for them. They actually say that one roach is the equivalent of like eight or 10 crickets, so it's really good for them. Plus, they like chasing around, so it's pretty cool. Flaming Hot is looking absolutely amazing. Beautiful lizard, love this guy. All right, you ready for another one? You're gonna have to work for this one a little bit, buddy. Oh, where'd it go? Oh. There it goes, there it goes, go get it. <laughs> he made quick work of it, that's for sure. But uh, okay, we'll give him a few more and then I think we're gonna move on and see if Toothless wants some too because we like to give him some and uh, it's good enrichment for him as well. Okay, flaming Hot, you ready? Go get it, go get it, go get it, go get it. Ah, <laughs> he got it. <laughs> what an awesome animal. This palmetto corn is starting to get so big and unbelievably beautiful. This is a recessive mutation in corn snakes, obviously. It's like a little cowrie tick, right? But the cowrie ticks are at least like this is just a recessive mutation. Unbelievable. Got to add more palmetto corns into the collection for sure, because they are the perfect little corn snake. And speaking of ridiculous corn snakes, take a look at the salmon snow corn snake here. That pink is really coming in. Oh my God. I mean, it's, how does that even real? How is a snake pink with green splotches? Uh, I don't know, but I'm holding it right now and I'm blown away. Since I have some roaches on, I might as well feed Nova. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. I know you want. There you go, bud. Come on. Get down. Oh, look at him. <laughs> he loves roaches. And it's so good for him. I mean, again, it's full of nutrients, plus they're dusted with vitamins. Really good stuff. Come on, Nova. Come on. Down here. Down here, bud. Down here. Come on over here. Yeah, good job, Nova. <laughs> You're such a cute little monkey. One more. Oh, he's so excited. He's such a cool little dude. I told you, I love that little guy. But if you notice when he's eating, he's got those two little fangs up front. I would never want to get bit by that dude. That is for sure. This coral snow motley isn't as pink as the one I showed you earlier, but still really amazing. I love the fact that the pattern just is like pink, green, white. I mean, it's just crazy. We got so many cool colubrids that are coming up that are gonna breed over the next couple of years. It's pretty exciting. Speedy, what the heck are you doing, dude? You're knocking all this stuff down. What are you doing, Speedy? Come on, buddy. Stop making a mess. I gotta clean this up. This is what they would call a bullseye albino Nelson's milk snake. And the bullseye is just literally, instead of bands, there's these kind of bullseyes that go right down their back where the triads actually don't meet with the belly, which is really cool. I want to get this into the T-positives for sure because it's going to make some really beautiful animals. We were talking about getting a live tree, and I just want to talk about when we're going to do this. Is need... all you think about is Christmas trees? Because it seems like all I talk to you about is a Christmas So now we're getting a live Christmas tree? Oh, don't act like you're not the one who wants it. You want it even more than I do. I, I actually do like live See, trees. I, I do like my, my whole childhood. I wanted live trees, but we couldn't afford it. So uh, it's pretty cool. The last few years we've had live tree. I love it to death. Are we going to chop it down with it like an axe? Or are we just going to get it? Uh, I, I don't know. We've never down. chopped it. It'd be cool to chop one down. But are we going to go to the same place? Please? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we do it tomorrow? My favorite part is the wine. So. <laughs> Wine and trees, that's all you, you know, all you ever think about. This is another snake you guys may remember. Last Halloween, we produced this as an albino Honduran milk snake, but I said it looked like the candy corn candies from Halloween. Uh, now it's getting some size to it. It looks even more cool. Those big, wide, kind of yellowish bands when it was a baby have turned more into like orange bands now. Nevertheless, still super cool. Can't wait till this gets up to size and see if we can actually breed these polymorphically and produce some more just like this. 
I know I've been kind of showing you some random things today, especially the colubrid stuff. Basically, I've told you that as a snake breeder, things are a cycle, right? So we're always concentrating on the adult colubrids when it's breeding season, but now that they're in brumation, we can really start focusing on the razors. So I want to spend more time with them, getting them up to size, getting them ready for next year. So, wow, I tell you what, it is amazing some of the animals that we've kept and raised up. And Eric's been doing a great job of getting these little buggers up to size. It's crazy to think that one day Veer Day is going to be as big as Ivy. Who knows, even bigger. And we're super excited about the new display that we're building next door and the expansion for Ivy with that water. Free. It's going to be one of the coolest little things in the world. And eventually, maybe uh, Veer Day will go in there as well. If you enjoyed this video, please hit this video over here when I actually got Veer Day. Over here, you can just, you know, roll through a bunch of giant snakes playlist if you like that. On this side, you can hit that subscribe button. Turn those post notifications on for me. That way, you know when I upload a video. Have a wonderful day. Be kind to someone and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow.